In this video, you'll learn about the next steps in diagnosis and management when you suspect a bleeding disorder in a woman or girl. It was developed with a multidisciplinary group of experts. Bleeding disorders occur as often in women as in men. Despite substantial impact on women's quality of life and social participation, there is a large diagnostic delay. If you suspect a bleeding disorder based on the personal bleeding history and family history, first perform general laboratory assessment, consisting of a full blood count and assessment of the iron and ferritin status. These tests are not specific to individual bleeding disorders, but provide important information for clinical management. Coagulation screening requires expert interpretation and is not necessary in first line. Although abnormal results may point towards a bleeding disorder, PT and APTT will be normal in most patients with a bleeding disorder. Iron deficiency with and without anemia is common in women with bleeding disorders and may be symptomatic, so must be considered and treated. Iron deficiency is best assessed using serum ferritin and transferrin saturation. First-line treatment is the same for all women with bleeding disorders, so do not hesitate to start therapy immediately to avoid continued or recurrent bleeding symptoms, even in absence of a definite diagnosis. Iron deficiency with or without anemia should be treated with oral iron replacement therapy. Once daily or alternate day dosing is recommended to avoid tolerance issues and increased hepcidin levels, limiting iron absorption from the gut. Bleeding symptoms can be treated with an antifibrinolytic agent, such as tranexamic acid. This is used for a few days at a time, for example during periods, and is not for continuous use. Patients with severe bleeding should be referred to the emergency department for assessment. Heavy menstrual bleeding can be treated with hormonal therapy, consisting of a combined oral contraceptive or hormonal intrauterine device. NSAIDs may be used for dysmenorrhea. However, these can interfere with coagulation and may increase the risk of bleeding, so their use is best reserved until after investigations have been completed. The third and final step when suspecting a bleeding disorder is to contact a haematologist for diagnostic laboratory assessment and specialized management. Thank you for watching.